خادمین مسیحی از سراسر سر جهان با هم گرد آمده و این برنامه بین المللی را پای گذاری کردن این دروس به نحوی تدارک دیده شدند که به کلیسا یعنی جمع ایمانداران در بین ملت ها کمک کنند و آنها را در فهم و ادراک بیشتر از ایمان مسیحی خود مدد نمایند و ایمانداران را به خادمین خدا تبدیل سازند موضوع این درس هدایت شدن توسط روح القدس و این درس را آقای بیلیس کانلی تدریس می Hello, I'm Bayless Conley, and I'd like to welcome you to our fourth session on how to be led by the Holy Spirit. Salam, man, Bayless Conley, hastam, va khushhalam ke be in jalase chaharom az dars hedayat chodan tavasut ruhul qudus umadeid. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the priorities of life. Dar in dars mukhaim dar varee olaviyat hai zendegi sobat kani. When you have your priorities right, it helps you to make good decisions. وقت شما بدونید اولویت هاتون تو زندگی چیه، اون موقع است که میتونید تصمیم گیری های درست در زندگی. If your priorities are out of line, you're going to have much trouble in your life and in your ministry. اگر اولویت هاتون سر جای خودش نباشه، اون وقت اونجاست که خیلی مشکلات در زندگی و خدمتتون. Some decisions are very, very easy for me for me to make. All I need to do is look at my priorities. بعضی از تصمیم گیری ها برای من خیلی آسونه چرا چون فقط ببینم اولویت هم چیه در زندگی و تصمیم خدا ها می گیرم به خصوص در این درس میخوام با رهبران صحبت کنم اما اون چه که میگم برای همه عموم خوب There are four main priorities that I want to deal with. چهار اولویت اصلی هست که من میخوام اونها رو مطرح کنم ministry خدمت family خانواده relationship with God ارتباط ما با خدا and then rest and recreation استراحت و تفریح Now as you think about those for a moment what order would you put them in حالا وقتی شما به این چهار موضوع فکر میکنید کدوم یکی رو اول قرار میدید Priorities are determined by what you see as valuable and precious اولویت ها از دید شماست شما چه چیزی رو با ارزش میدونید مهم میدونید And the thing that when you have time that is all your own the thing that you pursue during that time will let you know where your priorities are وقتی شما وقت دارید میتونید یک کاری رو انجام بدید وقتی اون چیزی رو که دنبال میکنید به شما نشون میده که اولویت شما در زندگی چیه For some people their ministry is the top priority برای بعضی از افراد خدمت در وهله اول زندگی قرار For other people, it's it's their recreation and their rest. They they sort of the sports they love. But in some cases, it's possible that that relaxation and calm is the priority that they have in their lives. Some people, it's it's their their children or their their spouse. Some of the children and their spouse are the priority for them. Let me share with you the way your priorities should be. Now, let me share with you the way your priorities should be. Now, let me share with you the way your باشند به چه صورتی قرار بگیرید؟ The number one priority is your personal relationship with God. اولین اولویت شما باید اون رابطه شخصی باشه که با خدا دارید. Your second priority should be your family. دومین چیزی که در اولویت قرار میگیره خانواده. Your third priority would be your ministry. سومین چیز خدمته. Now, if you're not in ministry, of course, that would equate to your job. اگر شما در کار خدمت خدا نیستید خب مثلا شغلتون رو بعد اونجا در اولویت قرار. The fourth priority would be rest and recreation. و چهارمین مطلب آرامش و تفریح و استراحت. Anytime any one of these priorities jumps out of line, it's headed for the number one spot. هر وقت یکی از اینا از خط خارج بشه میره و در رده اول قرار میگیره. This world was plunged into darkness because Adam and Eve got their priorities out of line. این دنیا اصولا وارد تاریکی شد چرا چون آدم و هوا اصلا از خط خارج شدن. Eve put the material above the spiritual. هوا اومد مادیات رو پیش از روحانیت روحانیت قرار داد. Adam put his wife above God. آدم چی کار کرد؟ خانمش رو از خدا برتری داد. When you study your Bible, you find out that God is a God of order. وقتی شما کتاب مقدس می خونید می بینید خدا خدایی است که نظم داره. Everything from giving offerings از دادن هدایا to building the tabernacle تا ساختن اون مذبح to making holy incense تا درست کردن اون 
to marching into war. God has a specific order for doing things. You can avoid so many problems in your life and in your ministry. If you will prioritize your life according to biblical patterns and principles. Many, many ministers have made shipwreck of their lives because they let their priorities get out of line. خیلی از خادمین خدا زندگیشون شکسته شده، نابود شده چون از اون خط خارج شدن. خط اولویت ها. They put their ministry first and they neglected their family. خدمتشون رو گذاشتن در وهله اول، خانواده رو فراموش کردن. They didn't take time with their personal relationship with God. اصلا فراموش کردن که با خدا ارتباط شخصی داشته باشن. My friend, it, it pays to do things God's way. Turn with me if you would in your Bible to Deuteronomy chapter 30. We're going to talk about the number one priority, which is your personal relationship with God. And let me define that term for you. That is not preaching. What I'm doing right now, this is not my personal relationship with God. It's the overflow of my relationship with God, but this is not my relationship with God. ممکن یه چیزی باشه که لبریز شده از اون ارتباط من با خدا، ولی این ارتباط شخصی من با خدا نیست. Even praying and studying to get a message to preach, that is not my relationship with God. وقتی من دعا می کنم، وقتی دارم خودم آماده می کنم که موعظه رو انجام بدم، این ارتباط شخصی من با خدا نیست. By that that personal relationship, I mean my friendship and my fellowship with God. وقتی من درباره ارتباط شخصی صحبت می کنم راجع به اون دوستی و اون نزدیکی با خدا دارم صحبت می کنم. The time that I spend in His presence in prayer and worship. اون زمانی که من در حضور او در دعا و پرستش می گذرونم. The time that I spend in His Word, just getting to know Him. زمانی که در کلام او وقت می گذارم تا او را بهتر بشناسم. That is the first priority of life. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. امروز آسمان و زمین را بر شما شاهد می آورم که حیات و موت و برکت و لعنت را پیش روی تو گذاشتم پس حیات را برگزین تا تو با ذریتت زنده بمانی verse 20 that you may love the lord your god that you may obey his voice and that you may cling to him for he is your life and the length of your days and that you may dwell in the land which the lord swore to your fathers to abraham isaac and jacob to give them ای بیست و تا یهوه خدای خود را دوست بداری و آواز او را بشنوی و به او ملصق شوی زیرا که او حیات تو و درازی عمر تو است تا در زمینی که خداوند برای پدرانت ابراهیم و اسحاق و یعقوب قسم خورد که آن را به ایشان بدهد verse 19 he said choose life and verse 20 he said God is your life در آیه 19 میگه حیات رو انتخاب کن و بعد میگه خدا حیات توه he said love the Lord cling to the Lord خدا را محبت کن به او بچست your intimate fellowship with God through prayer and the Word is number one. All effective ministry will be the overflow or the outgrowth of this personal fellowship with God. We won't take time to turn there right now, but in John chapter 15, verses 4 and 5, Jesus in verses 4 and 5 said he's the vine and we are the branches. He said the only way we can be fruitful is if we abide in him. In one translation, it says that we must maintain a living communion with Him. I 
I talked to some young believers and some young ministers that are in such a hurry. با بعضی از جوانان خادمین جوان وقتی من صحبت میکنم میبینم چقدر عجله دارن. They say we, we need to go out and preach the word. We want to cast out devils and heal the sick. میخوان برن میگن میخوان موعظه کنیم میخوایم بیمار رو شفا بدیم میخوایم ارواح شری رو اخراج کنیم. Yes, we need to do all of those things. We must pray for the sick, cast out demons and preach the word. بله همه این کارا رو بکنیم. باید برای بیماران دعا کنیم. باید ارواح شری رو خارج کنیم. باید کلام موعظه کنیم. Something must come first. ولی یک چیز بعد در Look with me in Mark's Gospel, the third chapter. Angel of Marcos, فصل سیر ولت فنبیاری. Mark chapter three, and we're going to read verses thirteen through fifteen. Angel of Marcos, فصل سه آیات سیزده تا پونزده رو میخونیم. Verse thirteen through fifteen. آیات سیزده الا پونزده. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted, and they came to him. پس بر فراز کوهی بر آمده هر که را خواسته به نزد خود طلبید و ایشان نزد او آمدند. Then he appointed twelve that they might be with him and he might send them out to preach. و دوازده نفر را مقرر فرمود تا همراه او باشند و تا ایشان را به جهت وعظ نمودند بفرستند. And have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. و ایشان را قدرت بخشید که مریضان را شفا دهند و دیبها را بیرون کنند. And notice he appointed the disciples first to be with him. ببینید اول به اون رسولان گفت با من باشید. Then he would send them out to preach. بعد فرستادشون برن وعظ. And to heal and to deliver. بعد گفت برید شفا بدید برید ارواح اخراج کنید. You're called to preach, yes. بله شما باید وعظ کنید. You're called to cast out demons and heal the sick. شما باید بیماران رو شفا بدید ارواح شری رو خارج کنید. But first you are called to be with him. ولی اولین چیزی که او از شما میخواد اینه که با او بمانید. The apostle Paul cried out in Philippians chapter three. Ulesse Rasul dar Filipian faste se fariyat mizane. Oh, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Mige ta u va kudrat e rastakhiz e u ra beshenasam. Knowing him comes before knowing his power. Shenakhte u qabl az shenakhte kudrat e u has. If you will get this priority right, many other things will work themselves out. اگر ما این را بفهمیم خیلی چیزایی دیگه سر جای خودشون قرار میگیرن. Look with me in Luke's Gospel, the tenth chapter. انجیل لوقا فصل ده رو لطفا بیارید. Some people are so busy with the ministry that they don't have time for the Lord. بعضی افراد اینقدر تو کار خدمت قرض شدن مشغولن که اصلا وقت برای خدا نداره. I realize that sounds funny. You can actually be working for God and have no time to spend with God. میدونم ممکنه مضحک به نظر برسه. شما ممکنه اینقدر برای خدا داشته باشید کار بکنید که اصلا وقت نداشته باشید با خدا وقت بگذارید. Don't get so busy with the work of the Lord that you don't have time to spend with the Lord himself. اینقدر با کار خدا خودتون رو مشغول نکنید که نه نرسید با خود خدا وقت بگذارید. Luke chapter 10 we're going to read verses 38 through 42. انجیل لوقا فصل 10 آیات 38 تا 42 رو می‌خونیم. Verse 38 Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. آیه 38 و هنگامی که می‌رفتند او وارد بلدی شد و زنی که مرتا نام داشت او را به خانه خود پذیرفت. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus feet and heard his word. و او را خواهری مریم نام بود که نزد پایهای عیسی نشسته کلام او را می‌شنید. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, "Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me." اما مرتا به جهت زیادتی خدمت مسترب می بود. پس نزدیک آمده گفت: "ای خداوند، آیا تو را باقی نیست که خواهرم مرا با گذارده که تنها خدمت کنم؟ او را به فرما تا مرا یاری کنم." Jesus answered and said to her, "Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things." ایسا در جواب وی گفت: "ای مرتا، ای مرتا، تو در چیزهای بسیار اندیشه و استراب." But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. لیکن یک چیز لازم است و مریم آن نصیب خوب را اختیار کرده است که از او گرفته نخواهد شد. Mary had chosen to sit at the feet of Jesus and hear His word. مریم تصمیم گرفته بود نزد پایهای عیسی بشینه کلام او را بشنوه. Jesus said, "That's the one thing that's needed." عیسی مسیح گفت این تنها چیزی است که احتیاجه. This is the top priority. In bayad dar olaviyat ma bashi. Martha, in one translation, said she was overoccupied and too busy. Dar yek tarjume mige Martha, khayli mashgul bud, mostareb bud, mikhas kar bokane. 
What is she busy doing? مشغول چی بود؟ Is it a terrible thing? آیا مشغول بودن بده؟ No, it's a good thing. نه، چیز خوبیه. She's serving the Lord. داشت خدا رو خدمت می‌کرد. She's serving the disciples of the Lord. داشت شاگردای خداوند رو خدمت می‌کرد. She's helping people. داشت مردم رو کمک می‌کرد. But she's taking no time to sit with Jesus. اما وقت نمی‌ذاش که بشینه نزد پاهای مسیح. Pastor leader, listen to me. شبانان رهبران به من گوش بدید. Take time to sit at the feet of Jesus. وقت بگذارید که بشینید نزد پاهای مسیح. The Bible says Mary chose to do this. کلام خدا میگه مریم نصیب خوب رو انتخاب کرد. In Deuteronomy we read, we read that you have to choose to be with God. در تصنیه گفتیم شما باید تصمیم بگیرید که با خدا بمانید. A thousand things will call to you to pull you away. هزاران چیز سر راه شما قرار میگیره که شما رو بکشه ببره. But you cannot minister effectively until you've been with him. و شما نمیتونید خدمت موثری داشته باشید مگر اینکه با خدا بمانید. I used to go to the gas station and I would get fr- so frustrated. من میرفتم تو پمپ بنزین خیلی عصبانی و ناراحت میشدم. As I would be pumping the gas in my car, it seemed like the gas pumps would take forever. چرا چه وقتی میخواستم این بنزین رو بریزم توی ماشین فکر کردم او چقدر طول میکشه. I had no patience with it. حوصله نداشتم. So I put a very small amount of gasoline in because I couldn't wait until my tank was full. خیلی کم بنزین میزدم چون که حوصله نداشتم با کم پرشه. One day I'm I'm putting the little bit of gas in my car like I always do. یه روز داشتم یه خود بنزین می‌ریختم توی باکم مثل همیشه که می‌ریزم. And the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. روح القدس با من صحبت کرد با قلب من. He said you do the same thing to me. گفت همین کارو با منم می‌کنی تو. I said what do you mean Lord? گفتم خداوند منظورت چیه؟ He says you come into my presence. و میای در حضور من. And you're always in such a hurry you never stay long enough to get full. ولی همیشه اینقدر عجله داری میخوای بری نمیرسی پر بشی. That's why you're out of gas spirit. برای همینم بنزین تموم میشه از نظر روحانی. He said spend enough time in my presence to get full. اگر میخوای پر باشی بعد در حضور من بمانی. I said Lord I repent. گفتم خدایا توبه میکنم. And I changed. My number one priority is to be with him. My second priority is my family. I have small children. And my precious wife. Within that priority, I want to break it into two parts. First comes your spouse, then comes your children. اول همسر شماست و بعد فرزندانتون. My wife comes after God and before my children. خانم من بعد از خدا و قبل از فرزندان من قرار داره. Look with me in Genesis chapter two if you would. پیدایش فصل دو رو لطفا بیاری. We're going to read where God created a helper for Adam. میخوایم بخونیم ببینیم چطور خدا معاونی برای آدم خلق کرد. Genesis 2 and verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Now, as we read the story, we see God took one of Adam's ribs and he made a woman and brought her to him. And when God said it's not good that he should be alone, he didn't say, I'll make a ministry for him. He said, I'll make a helper suitable for him. His wife completed him, not a ministry. So many people look to their job for fulfillment. Or, or, or to their ministry. Your wife or your husband makes you complete. From the time I was first saved, I had heard people say something. I 
I heard many people say that the ministry comes before your wife. خیلی‌ها می‌گفتن که خدمت قبل از همسر شما قرار داره. I was very puzzled about that. من تعجب می‌کردم درباره این موضوع. I was camping in the mountains one time. یه بار در یه نقطه کوهستانی رفته بودم برای کمپین. Late at night after the fire had gone out I was laying on my back talking to God. آخر شب وقتی که دیگه اون آتیش هم خاموش شده بود خوابیده بودم داشتم با خدا صحبت می‌کردم. I was not married then, but I knew I was called to ministry. I said, Lord, people have told me that the ministry comes before a, a wife. گفتم خدایا مردم میگن که خدمت قبل از یک همسر هست. ارجحیت داره به یک همسر. I said, Lord, which one comes first? گفتم خدایا تو به من بگو کدوم یکی بر دیگری ارجحه. The Lord answered my question with a question. خدا سوال من با یه سوال جواب داد. I heard this question in my heart. این سوال رو در قلب خودم شنیدم. What is ministry? خدای من گفت خدمت چیه؟ I thought for a moment I said I believe I know. یه لحظه فکر کردم گفتم چه خب میدونم. Ministry is people. خدمت مردمه. God said good. He said your wife is a person. Minister to her first. خدا گفت خوب گفتی. زن تو هم یکی از این مردمه. اول او رو خدمت کن. That settled it for me. But I also found that the Bible teaches the same thing. Look with me in 1 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to begin in verse 1 and read through verse 5. 1 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 5. This is a faithful saying if a man desires the position of a bishop he desires a good work. این سخن امین است که اگر کسی منصب اسقفی را بخواهد کار نیکو می طلبد. A bishop then must be blameless the husband of one wife temperate sober minded of good behavior hospitable able to teach. پس اسقف باید بی ملامت و صاحب یک زن و هوشیار و خردمند و صاحب نظام و مهمان نواز و راغب به تعلیم باشد. Not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous. نمی گسار یا زننده یا تماع سود قبی بلکه حلیم و نه جنگجو و نه زرپرست. One who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. مدبر اهل خانه خود به نیکویی و فرزندان خیش را در کمال وقار متی گرفت. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? هر گاه کسی نداند که اهل خانه خود را تدبیر کند چگونه که دیسای خدا را نگاه بانی می نماید. These verses tell us that your wife and children come before your ministry. این کلام داره به ما میگه همسر و فرزندان شما قبل از خدمت شما قرار می گیرند. If I cannot care for my wife, I cannot care for ministry. If I can't care for my bride, how can I care for the bride of Christ? If I can't care for my family, how can I care for the family of God? Many ministers have ended up in the divorce court because they neglected their spouse. خادمین در دادگاه های طلاق میرن چرا چون نمیتونن از خانمشون نگهداری کنن از همسرشون They were too busy with their ministry to put any time into their marriage. خدمت خودشون انقدر مشغول بودن که اصلا وقت برای اینکه در خانواده بذارن نداشتن. I have known many preachers that were so busy. خیلی از واعظین انقدر مشغول بودن trying to meet the needs of others. که میخواستن احتیاجات دیگران رو برآورده کنن that they totally neglected their own wives. You must learn that your wife is more important than your ministry. There are, are women that I have known. Married to preachers. But they were totally neglected by their husbands. They were lonely. He never spoke with them. His life was the ministry. And the devil sent someone along to tempt the wife. And some have given into the temptation and committed adultery. Now they are responsible for their sins and for their actions. But it was partially their husband's fault. 
تقصیر شوهرانشون هم هست I've seen the reverse happen as well عکسش هم همینطور A woman that's involved in ministry taking no time for her husband. The same thing can happen. I know one woman that divorced her husband. She said, you're hindering my ministry. I have to get you out of the way. I don't have time for you. My wife is second to God only. برای من خانومم دومین مقام و بعد از خدا در زندگیم داره. She comes before every other person in our church. قبل از هر کس دیگه ای در کلیسا او برای من مهم. Or any person outside of the church. و هر کس دیگه هم خارج از کلیسا او برای من مهم. We are a team. ما یک تیم هستیم من و خانوم. I cannot minister effectively if my relationship with her is not right. اگر ارتباط من با او درست نباشه اصلا من نمیتونم خدمت کنم. She is my first minister. It's my responsibility as well as my joy to see that her needs are met. این شادی و مسئولیت منه که ببینم احتیاجات او برآورده بشه. When I give to her, it does nothing but bless the ministry. وقتی من به او چیزایی رو که لازمه میدم، اون خدمت منم برکت پیدا می‌کنه. We were driving down the road one day. یه روز ما داشتیم توی جاده می‌رفتیم. We had just been married a few years. And we'd been in a fight. And so I wasn't speaking to her. I was pretending like she wasn't even in the car. And again, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. He said, son, if you're out of fellowship with your wife, you're out of fellowship with me. I immediately turned around and said, honey, I'm sorry. بلا فاصله برگشتم گفتم عزیزم متاسفم. I cannot minister effectively if my wife and I are not right. اگر من و خانومم با هم ارتباطمون درست نباشه من نمیتونم خدمت کنم. I spend time with her. من با او وقت میذارم. I set aside time just to give to her. اصلا وقتی رو برای او مخصوص کنار میذارم. It's important that you do the same. Now, within this priority of the family, next comes your children. Come after your spouse, but also before your ministry. Your children are your first mission field. میسیونی هستن که شما دارید در زندگی. And after you get them saved, they become your first uh, church. و بعد از اینم که نجات پیدا میکنن اولین کلیسای شما رو تشکیل میدن. I was driving in a car with an old minister one day. یه روز داشتم با یکی از این خادمین مسن در ماشین میرفتیم با هم. He had spent many many years preaching all over the world. ایشون سالهای سال در اطراف دنیا موعظه کرده. He was filled with wisdom. پر از حکمت بود. And we began to talk about the family. And he began to mention uh, a famous preacher after preacher that had lost their children. He mentioned one whose, whose son had died of a drug overdose. Other whose children committed suicide. Others who had children that hated God. I will never forget what he said to me. He looked into my eyes and he said this. He said, if that is success, I don't want it. The men that we were, were speaking about had spent no time with their children. They preached everywhere but gave no time to the family. Remember we read in 1 Timothy 3 that the minister's family must be in order first before he's qualified to minister to others. 
Why is it that some children are, 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 are so, so bitter and angry toward God and toward the church? Many times it's because their father had time for everyone else and no time for them. I would like to, to refer you to a story. We won't take time to turn there, but you can find it in 2 Samuel chapter 2. Excuse me, 1 Samuel chapter 2. It's a story about a priest named Eli. He, he was a minister of God. But the Bible says his own sons did not know the Lord. It says they were committing immoral acts with the women around the temple. It says his boys were stealing the offerings. And because of his children, the Bible says that the people despised the offerings of the Lord. His children were out of control and he did nothing to change it. It's a shame when the preacher's own children don't know the Lord. There was a, a, a young boy that was also raised in the household of Eli that was different. It was the son of Hannah. His name was Samuel. In Pesare Hanabut ke esme Samuel. Now, Samuel was different. He grew up and he knew the Lord and he worshipped the Lord. But if you read your Bible, you find out that even Samuel, though he was a great prophet of God, he lost his own children. We won't take time to turn there, but you can read it in 1 Samuel chapter 8. The Bible says that the people came to Samuel and they said this. They said, we see that you're old and ready to die. But your sons don't follow in your ways. They take bribes. They lie. We... We don't want them to rule over us. They say, we want a king like other nations. Israel having a king was never God's will. But God allowed it. You know why it happened? Because Samuel had lost his children. Apparently he hadn't taken time with them. You can be a great preacher. Your, your, your words can be on fire. But if you do not take time with your family, your ministry can crumble. Take time with your children. I heard a story about a man one day. The circus was coming to town and he was going to take his boys. They're getting ready to leave the house and suddenly the telephone rang. It was someone from work said, we want you to come into work. He said, I'm sorry, I can't. I, I, I have something planned. They said, are you sure we'd like you to come in? said, I can't do it. He hung the phone up and his wife was staring at him. She said, honey, the, the circus will, will come back again. He said, said, yes, but my boy's childhood will not come back again.
It is important to spend time with your children. این مهمه که با بچه هاتون وقت بگذاری. Just yesterday I received an invitation to come speak in Africa. دیروز من دعوتنامه دریافت کردم که برم در آفریقا صحبت کنم. In the second largest city of a nation. در دومین شهر بزرگی که از مملکت ها. It's going to be a huge crusade. یک جلسه عظیم مسیح. They asked me to be the, the featured speaker. به من گفتن شما بیاید اینجا و سخنگوی مهمان ما باشید. But during the dates they wanted me to come. ولی اون تاریخی که اونا میخوان من اونجا برم. I already have a time scheduled with my family. من اونو برنامه ریزی کردم برای خانواده خودم. I didn't even really need to pray about it. اصلا لازم نبود راجع به این موضوعی که دعام بکنم. I wrote them back and thanked them for the invitation. نامه نوشتم تشکر کردم برای این دعوت. Said I'm sorry I can't come. I have time with my family then. گفتم ولی من نمیتونم بیام. من باید با خانواده خودم باشم. I'm not going to lose my family. من نمیخوام خانواده خودم از دست بدم. Now you might say, well they'll understand. شما میگید حالا بله اونا متوجه میشن. Some people say that again and again and again, and they never end up spending the time with their family. I schedule time with my children first. They end up being my greatest asset to the ministry. People are drawn to the church. مردم به طرف کلیسا کشیده میشن because they see a solid family in the pastor. چون میبینن یه خانواده مستحکمی داره این کشیششون. I make decisions based upon my priorities. من تصمیم گیری های خودم رو گذاشتم بر پایه اولویت ها. If it's going to hurt my family, I won't do it. اگر چیزی خانواده منو صدمه بزنه من اون کارو انجام نمیدم. All of the television equipment that's being used right now. تمام وسایلی که همین الان داره برای این برنامه تلویزیونی استفاده میشه. I'm going to tell you how we got all this equipment. من میخوام بهتون بگم ما تمام این رو چطوری به دست آوردیم. چی شد که به دست؟ We used to film gospel television programs in a local studio. ما در یه استودیوی محلی اینجا میرفتیم برنامه های تلویزیونی مسیح تایید میکرد. And I would drive every week to go film all of these programs. I already had a very busy schedule. And as I would leave, the children would say, "Daddy, do you have to go again? Can't you stay with us?" وقتی می رفتم هر شب بچه ها می گفتن بابا بازم باید بری کنسلش کن امشب با ما بمون. Many times I would drive down the street weeping with tears coming down my cheeks. خیلی وقتا همین جاده رو که میرفتم پایین پشت ماشینم حتی عشق از چشمم جاری بود. I'd say my heart oh god I know you want me to do television but what about my family? تو قلبم میگفتم خداوندا میدونم که تو میخوای من برنامه های تلویزیون رو تهیه کنم ولی بچه‌هام چی میشن؟ So it came into my heart to do something. تو قلبم اومد که یه کاری بکنم. We invested in all of the television equipment. Brought everything into the church. So that it's done right here. I worked it out. That if I didn't have to go away those evenings to tape the television programs. That by the time my oldest son was 18 years old. I would have been able to spend a full year of evenings with him. یک سال تمام من شبها وقت با او گذاشتم چون این مسافت دیگه نمیرم بیام. The decision to buy all of the television equipment was based upon my priorities. تصمیم گیری درباره این که تمام این وسایل فیلم برداری تلویزیون رو بخریم به خاطر این بود که من اولویت تمام جای درست گذاشتم. And I've never regretted it. و هیچ وقت هم پشیمون نشدم. You can't put a price on your family. Family, Shomab, arzeshesh cheli balas. Turn with me in your Bible to Colossians chapter four. Lotfam kulesian fast le chahar biari. We come to the next area of priority, ministry. Halam ichaim berim on olaviyat baadi ro dar zendegi motaliye koni. It comes after your relationship with God and after your family. Bad az ertebat shoma ba Khuda, bad az ertebat shoma ba khanewade, olaviyat sevon. Colossians chapter four and verse seventeen. Kulesian fasl chahar ayeh hevda. And say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord, that you may fulfill it. Dar chepus guid ba khabar baash ta an khidmati ra ke dar Khodavand yaftei be kamal resan. He said, fulfill the ministry you've received from the Lord. Un khidmati ro ke az Khoda dar yaft kardi kamel kan be kamal beresan. Look at another verse with me in Second Timothy chapter four. Ya ye dige dovam Timotaus fasl chahar biad ba ham negakani. 
And we want to look at verse 5. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. If you are called into the ministry, my friend, fulfill your ministry. You have to give yourself to your ministry. Ministry is co-laboring together with God to change people's lives and destinies for eternity. I break the ministry down into several areas. Number one is my time of prayer and study. I have to study the word of God and, and, and pray and seek the mind of God. So that I have a fresh message to deliver to my people. I'm called to feed the flock of God. Have you ever smelled fresh bread cooking? Oh my, it just draws you to it. Well, as a preacher, you're called to do something. To take fresh bread from the ovens of heaven and deliver it to your people. You must pray and study. To hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. That that word will penetrate the hearts of your people. That is number one, my study and prayer. Now after that comes the staff in the church or the, the staff in the ministry, the leaders in the ministry. You must take time with your leaders. Jesus had a pattern in his life. There were three people that were closest to him. Peter, James, and John. Many times he would just take those three with him aside. And then he ministered to the other 12. They were the next circle of people that were close to him. He spent the next amount of time with them. And then there was a group of 70 disciples that were the next circle that were close to Jesus. He spent the next amount of time with them. Then there were the masses and the multitudes. And then Jesus spent time with them. There was the three. There was the twelve. There was the seventy. And then there was the multitudes. I, I, I pastor a church. I must take time with, with the leaders in my church. And then after that, I minister to the congregation. The next area in that, after your leaders, is ministering to your people. You need to give them the word of God and pray for them. Be available to them. As we say in English, be touchable. They need to be able to relate to you. I have been to some churches and it's almost as if there's armed guards around the preacher all the time. تو بعضی از کلیسا ها رفتم مثل که مثلا این شبان داره دائما حفاظت میشه مردم اصلا میترسن برن جلو به شبان بگن سلام شما باید با اون جماعت خودتون در ارتباط باشید با اونها یک باشید ایسای مسیح با جماعت همیشه قاطی میشد خدمت یعنی همین خدمت در مورد مردمه 
A person that doesn't like people shouldn't be in ministry. کسی که مردم رو دوست نداره نباید در کار خدمت خدا باشه. Now, ministry is work. خدمت کاره. You must work at being a good minister. شما باید کار بکنید. وقتی یه خادم خوب هستید باید کار بکنید. Look with me at 1 Peter chapter 5 if you would. لطفاً اول پتروس فصل پنج رو بیارید. Now, if you have your first priorities in order, شما های خودتون رو درست قرار داده باشید. Your relationship with God, ارتباطتون با خدا. Your family, and then the ministry. بعد خدمت. You will be a success. شما حتما موفق. Look here in First Peter chapter five, verses two and three. بیاید اول پتروس فصل پنج آیات دو و سه رو با هم بخونیم. It says, "Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion but willingly, not for dishonest gain but eagerly." گله خدا را که در میان شماست بچرانید و نظارت آن را بکنید نه به زور بلکه به رضامندی و نه به جهت سود قوی بلکه به رقبت. Nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. نه چنان که بر قسمت های خود خداوندی بکنید، بلکه به جهت گله نمونه باشی. Ministers were never called to be dictators. خادمین هرگز خونده نشدند که دیکتاتور باشند. Yes, they must make decisions. باید تصمیم گیری بکنند. And they must take the lead. باید رهبری بکنند. Leaders must be strong. But the main way they lead is not by giving orders. It is by being an example. Be an example of a man or woman that spends time with God alone. Be an example of someone that loves their husband or their wife. نمونه باشه در اینکه همسر شما محبت میکنه. Be an example of someone that takes time with their family. نمونه باشه برای کسی که با خانواده خودش وقت میذاره ببینن اینو جماعت. I think those things in my life. ما فهم کردم همین چیزا در زندگی من. Perhaps preach louder to our people than any sermon I've ever shared. این موزه بزرگتر یه در زندگی من برای مردم تا اونچه که من وای میسم از کلام خدا برای. Be an example to the flock. برای یه گله خودتون نمونه باشی. Fulfill fulfill your ministry. خدمت خودتون رو کامل کن. The final thing in this list of priorities. آخرین چیزی که در این لیست اولویت ها است استراحت و تفریح Look with me in Mark's Gospel the 6th chapter لطفا انجیل مرقس فصل 6 رو بیارید Mark chapter 6 and verse 31 مرقس فصل 6 آیه 31 Jesus is speaking to his disciples here عیسی مسیح داره با شاگردان خودش صحبت میکنه and he says this. And he said to them, Come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. Edishan gof, Shoma be khalwat be jay veyran biayid, va andaki istirahat namayid. Zira amad o raf chenan bud ke forsat nan khordan niz nakardan. The ministry can be that way. There are so many people coming and going. There's so much activity going on. There are things happening in our church every day of the week. There are so many needs. There are so many desperate people. You could spend all day every day ministering and never get to everyone. There are times when Jesus will say to you, come aside and rest for a while. اون وقت زمانی است که عیسی مسیح به شما میگه بیا بیا در خلوت بیا استراحت کنی خود. There have been times like the disciples I haven't even had time to eat. زمانهایی بوده که منم مثل همون شاگردان وقت غذا خوردن نداشتم. You cannot live that way continually. نمیشه اینطوری تا ابد زندگی کرد. نمیشه. You must take time to rest. شما باید زمانی هم برای استراحت بگذارید. If you don't your body will break down. اگر این کارو نکنید اصلا بدنتون از هم میپاشه. And you'll be forced to rest. و اون وقت مجبور میشید استراحت کنید. We won't take time to turn to this verse of scripture. نمیتونیم این قسمت از کلام رو بخونیم از روی کلام. But in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. ولی در اول تیموتاوس فصل 4 آیه 8. It says that godliness is profitable to all things. میگه لیکن دینداری برای هر چیز مفید است. Bodily exercise profits a little. رضایت بدنی اندک فایده ای دارد. Even though it profits just a little. اگرچه فایده اش کمه. You should get that little. ولی همون یه خورده هم شما باید انجام بدید. 
As well as resting, you should exercise. شما باید نه تنها استراحت می‌کنید، بایستی که ورزش هم بکنید. Do something for recreation. برای تفریح کاری انجام بدید. If you, you never do that again, your body will break down. اگر این کار رو نکنید، باز هم بدن از هم می‌پاشه. Find something that you like and that benefits your body. یه ورزش یه تمرینی رو که بهش علاقه دارید پیدا کنید. And do it. شروع کنید به اون. It sometimes it just helps to clear your mind. بعضی وقتا حتی کمک میکنه که ذهن شما باز بشه. I know one minister that would go take long walks on the beach. من یه خادمی رو میشناسم میره کنار دریا راه میره طولانی راه طولانی. He would get exercise and it was refreshing to him. وقتی که این تمرین رو میکنه این راه رو میره تازه میشه. I know some preachers that like to go out and and do a sport like play. بعضی دوست دارن بعضی از خادمین برن مثلا بازی کنن گلف بازی کنن. Now remember we have our priorities. یادتون باشه اولویت همون ما داریم. After everything else, with if you have time left. وقتی همه کاراتون کردی نه بازم وقت داشتی. Then go out and do these things. وقت باد بیم یکی از این فردش ها رو بکن. I'll get out and ride a bicycle sometime. من خودم دوست دارم بعضی خود دو چرخ سواری کنم. Or I'll go for a long walk. یا برم برای یک راه پیمایی تو. I need to take time to rest. سعی می کنم استراحت کنم. There must be a balance of rest and exercise along with ministry. بین ورزش و استراحت و خدمت باید یه بالانسی وجود داشته باشه. Or you can end up, or you can end up like one preacher that I knew. یا مثل یک واعظی میشید که من میشناسم. He preached every day. هر روز واعظ میکرد. Would stay up till two o'clock in the morning praying for people. تا دو صبح وای میساد برای مردم دعا میکرد. He did this month after month, year after year. هفته بعد از هفته، ماه بعد از ماه، سال بعد از. One day he collapsed. بالاخره از پدرم. He went to the doctor. Rap, he's a doctor. He was a young man. Jabun bu. The Bible says you, the, the, the doctor said you have the body of an old man. Doctor, beshko to badanet vesi pire mart chode. You've worn your body out. To az badan khud khili istifade. You have to take time to rest. Boyad zaman bezeri istirahat koni. He had to sit out of the ministry for a full year. Majbur shod yek saal tamam khidmat bezeri kani. While his body recovered. Ah, badanesh tar jay khodesh. What I'm saying to you is be wise. Unche ki nikham beshma begam ini ke azizan aqil. Take time to rest. Dar koni istirahat koni. Take time to exercise. Barzesh koni. Don't feel guilty about doing that. It is necessary for you. When I am rested, and my body is physically fit, I'm better able to preach and minister. I make decisions based on the priorities of life. Number one is my relationship with God. Number two is my family. Shomare do khanevad. Number three is the ministry. Shomare se khidmat. Number four is rest and recreation. Shomare chahar varzesh o tafri. I pray that God would give you understanding. Doa mi karam ki Khuda be shoma hikmat in kalam ro be. God bless you as you apply His word. Khuda shomare barakat bede vakti ke be kalam o u raftar mi kam. Amen. Amen.